Atlantic X TV. North Carolina has always had a special place with Triple Crown. I mean, Chad and I both grew up in North Carolina. We both started climbing in North Carolina. We've seen so many places get shut down. You know, we saw Grandfather Mountain get shut down many years ago, and that's like one of the biggest climbing areas in the southeast, where it was at one time. And now it's all basically rock held hostage. We can, we can look at it, but you can't climb on it. And that's probably why so many of the people involved in Triple Crown are local Boone and North Carolina people because we've, we've been hit hard by areas being shut down. The Southeast has so much incredible rock and I don't even travel out West anymore, very rarely. So when I get a trip, I just drive a few hours down the road. And... One thing that has definitely changed since we started the series 10 years ago um, is kind of the way that climbers, I think, deal with access has, has changed. You know, we've got a lot of private land in the southeast, unlike out west where a lot of stuff is public. And a lot of private landowners now are embracing the idea of pay to play. They can actually make money off, off their property. And with that, we get a lot more power as climbers when we go out and try to talk to other landowners about climbing on their land. Uh, before they had no reason to let us climb there, it's much easier just to say no, there's no liability concern. Why bother with dealing with climbers coming out, having an impact on your property? Now we can go to them and say, there's a reason to let us come in there and do this. We can come out, we'll clean up your property, you know, we'll do roadside cleanups or, or pick up whatever trash might be there. You can make money off of this. Ten years from now, I don't know. I don't know if Chad and I will still be doing it in 10 years. I feel like the event has grown beyond us and um, uh, I want to see it continue. And I, I see it really as just in its infancy. 10 years seems like a long time, but really it's not. I, I see where it came from in its first year to where it is now. And with each passing year of Triple Crown, there was always um, a, a bigger project, a harder project a bigger amount of money to raise maybe, um, a tougher relationship to kind of cut into and build. Okay, Emma. It's right here, dude. There's always those projects out there that, that may seem a little bit beyond you, but once you look at it, touch it, understand it, it gives you the sense that you can achieve it.
The Triple Crown was born in Boone, and that same tight-knit group, that same tribal atmosphere is there now too, and I've seen it grow, not just there, but kind of move its way out into all of the, the southeastern climbing scene, and I think really where Triple Crown found most success is in its ability to pull different nonprofits together. Relationships with a trail running community and then with the hiking community and with the mountain biking community. If you want to tackle the really big projects, the things that, that could mean the most to the climbing community, bring all those groups together as one large tribe. I think that is the future of the event and um, the future for, for rock climbing here in the Southeast. Stay with us right here on Planet X. Planet X TV. Remember when cell phones were only used for making calls? Now with smartphones, we're emailing, texting, and web surfing on the go. Our phones are constantly in our hands, except when they're not. Smartphone repairs and replacements are a costly hassle. Shouldn't there be a better way to get a grip on modern technology? Well, now there is. Hold the phone with Handable. The simple-to-use Handable slips easily onto your hand and makes using your smartphone more comfortable and secure. No more twisting your wrist awkwardly or straining to keep your grip. Handable lets you relax your fingers and pivot your smartphone for easy reading and viewing of videos, photos, and more. The Handable adjusts to fit any size hand snugly to let you browse, text, or talk with ease and it works with all cell phones and tablets. Hold the phone with Handable. Seven, ten, eight. Oh, Baker. What are we here doing? It's a training session, a bonding session more so. Get our skills in the same place. Make sure we're doing things in tandem. I think that the previous Knowles course that I'd taken had covered most of the technical skills, so for me, the real experience here was getting to know my team better and also just learning how we work together as a team. And that's really key because we need to work together effectively in order to climb a big mountain. If I just got dropped on the mountain with this team today, I'd be ready to take a crack at it. But we still have many months of training ahead of us and just, you know, preparing all of our lives for this event. I think we're going to be in the right place when it comes time to go after Denali. This whole trip really had the effect of being able to realistically quantify what lies ahead. With this successful summit under our belts, you know, we can actually have a, um, a deeper, broader conversation moving forward to the ultimate goal of Denali. The critical differences obviously will be altitude and cold. There's a question of, you know, what happens above 14,000 feet? I have no idea what it will be like at 17,000 and certainly have no idea what it will be like at 20,000. I'm scared of Denali. The weather, the altitude, cold fingers, cold toes, it's a big attempt.
the mission of Expedition Denali is to inspire youth of color and minorities to get out there. Whether we get to the summit or not, like the message still stands. We'll still go around talking to people. We'll still be encouraging people. To do this climb, it means a lot. I think it's a start to something bigger than what we all imagine. At the end of the day, what we all are really here for, which is to get more people out here doing the stuff that we're doing right now and that I love to do. Like I said, it only takes one. If I go to a school and talk to a school, uh, a kid comes up to me and says, uh, can, can I go with you the next time you go? Dude, that's magic right there. Because I know I just hooked that kid. So if I could get, you know, one or two of those Tyrees, you know, into the outer doors and he can get three and four of his friends in the outer doors, it's going to usher in a new color in the outer doors. Something that I often hear is, why does it matter if you're the first black person to do this? The mountain doesn't care if you're black. And it's true. Once you're on the mountain, it doesn't care if you're black. But by the time you're at the base of the mountain with the skills that you need, you're 75% of the way there at least. And it's that road to get to the base of the mountain that I think a lot of people don't appreciate. If you don't know anybody who's in the outdoors, it seems like you don't have the money to get in the outdoors. If it seems like you're in a location that's not near the wilderness and nature, there are definitely resources for you. So if you want to do it, go do it. And there are people who are totally excited to help you. Especially if you're a person of color, there's nobody I know that looks like me that's climbing mountains. So even if I wanted to go do it, you might feel a certain way. Do I belong here? How are people gonna take it? And I think Expedition Denali is gonna introduce people to the sport that wouldn't think about it. It's not for everyone, but it's gonna give you permission that if you wanna try it, like, it's okay. You know, we did it and there's other people out here doing it and it's perfectly fine. Like come out here and hang out and chill. You need to take a look at it from the perspective of a representation of how people of color aspire to the heights of all aspects of American society. And, and Denali is the highest physical point in the United States. And I think that once you take the time to, to see that, that you can do that, you can do anything. I think this will be very significant for all of us who are trying to do this. But in 50 to 100 years, I hope that it won't be a big story. I hope that there will be universal appreciation for the outdoors, not just among black folks, like among everyone, and that this effort will have contributed to that reality. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.